last week I received a rather unexpected delivery from Flywheel. In that was these new Groku flight stacks as well as one of their naked GoPro cameras. Now today's video is going to be a quick look at these flight controllers because they are quite interesting with regards to features and price point and then we're going to take a look at that naked GoPro in a later video. Now just to be crystal clear up front this isn't really a review I'm not going to be flying these flight stacks today I have actually shown these on one of my live streams already but I do think they are worthy of having their own dedicated video because as I've said we have some really interesting features here on these flight stacks at a very interesting price point. Now to be clear Flywoo did send me these over for free however they haven't asked me to make this video as I've said they didn't tell me it was actually coming they've not paid me to make this video they've not seen this video before it's been published and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, now starting with our F7 Pro. Now I've just removed the packaging. As I showed earlier, it does have some of the specs on. So 50 amp BL Heli Air, 30 by 30 stack. And obviously it's going to be running an F7 CPU. Now I haven't seen this yet myself. Oh wow, okay. We have a white PCB for our flight controller and a black PCB for our ESC. Now if we just pop these out, We'll take a closer look at these in a second. Really, there's not a great deal to show you here on the ESC. It says BL Heli S, 50 amp. I will dig into the main spec on it a little bit more later on just to give you an overview of the things like the overcurrent or the maximum current capability. What you can see though is we've got our FETs, our pads, nice large pads for our battery connector. We've then got our header that goes to our flight controller and they've actually padded that out as well on the other side so if you were to break that you can do it manually which is always good to see. The flight controller obviously has that F722 CPU. You see it's got a USB-C port. If we just take a look in the box what else we've got we'll see probably a bunch of cables. Right we've got yep the bunch of cables and connections for the flight controller they've included a capacitor as well and then you've got all the wiring harnesses you'll have the harnesses that go between the ESC and the flight controller and then you've got all the other harnesses for all of the other IO that's on there we then have a flywheel sticker which is always good to see and oh what we got here we have a leaflet that seems to show us all of the pads oh and there's a spec down there as well so we'll use this actually i think to go over what the flight controller has popping it over the top of the one on the leaflet you can see here down the bottom there is our main spec so we've got an f722 cpu we have the mpu 6000 gyro we have a built-in barometer we have 16 megabytes of black box storage input voltage range 7 to 26 volt or 2 to 6s lipo and it has two becks on board it says 10 volt 2 amp as well as 5 volt 2 amp and it weighs 9.9 grams. Now what's nice is this leaflet shows you all of the pinouts for the headers and if we flip it over you can see they've also broke all of those headers out into pads as well. So walking around it we've got a USB-C port for updating the firmware, great to see USB-C, pretty much everyone should be moving over to this now, I don't want to see another flight controller with a micro USB. Then looking up here we've got our buzzer header, we have our main ESC connector, so that's RX6, current, S4 to S1, battery and ground. So that is our connection down to our ESC. And then next to that, you've got 5 volt ground and cam, so that's our analog camera input. If we then look down here, we've got some additional motor ports, so S5, 6, 7 and 8. Another RX input, which is RX6 again, battery and ground. So again, if you wanted to attach it to a second ESC for doing a coaxial setup. You've then got our next one down, which is ground, 10 volt, VTX and TX3. So that's our analog VTX connector. There must be an analog OSD chip. Oh, there it is over there. So that's for that. And then we've got SCL SDA pads, which is our I2C. So that means you can use it with a compass if you wanted to. TX and RX4 there. And then if I just rotate it along this side of the board, We've got our ground, RX5, TX5, and 4V5. So that's going to be your receiver input or something like a GPS. You've then got 10 volt ground, TX3, RX3, ground, and RX1. That one there is our digital connector. That's going to be ideal for DJI 3 Avatar HD. And then over this side, you've got ground, 4V5, RX2, and TX2. Again, another sensor input. So those two on the end, one could be for a receiver, one can be for something like GPS. If we then flip it over, 
they then have broken everything out onto pads. It's all of the same I.O., but it's all there on pads on the flight controller. So if you were to break one of these headers, you can manually wire it. What's actually interesting, looking at this, and I've just spotted this, you've got the USB-C port here. They also break that out onto pads on the bottom of the board. That is really unusual. You don't see that very often on flight controllers, but that's really good to see. Now, really, walking around it, there's not a lot more to show you other than that. So what we've got then is our F722 in the middle. We then have our barrow there. I can tell us the barrow because it's got a little hole in it. We've probably got our gyro there. If we flip it over, you can see our two backs. As I said, one does five volt, one does 10 volt. So you can run your DJI 3 directly from the back. That way you don't have to worry about potential damage from your battery from spikes. We've got our OSD chip there. And then you've got that 16 megabytes of onboard flash there. That'll be the Windbond chip. Now it is quite unusual to see a PCB in this color. It doesn't affect the use, but it isn't a typical color that you see manufacturers use. Now, as I did mention at the start, this is a 30 by 30 mountain. There's no 20 by 20 on this one, but it has pretty much all of the IO you're ever going to need. Now, another nice feature on this flight controller is that it has a controllable back. And what I mean by that is the output for this is designed to be used with the DJI 03 system. You have that specific header down there. However, you can control that via a setting in beta flight that allows you to stop the ear unit overheating. So what you can do is actually put that output on a switch. And then when you want to power up the ear unit, you can flick the switch, enable the DJI 03 ear unit, also the same for Avatar HD and HD Zero, I may add as well. And that way you can get your craft up and running on the ground. If you're someone that is using it with GPS, you can sit there allowing the GPS to lock without worrying about your ear unit overheating. You can then have that on a switch that you can kick in. Then once it's all connected, begin your flight. And it's just another nice feature that is good to see on these controllers. Next, moving over to the other one, which is the F7 Mini version 2. Now, obviously, this is still an F7 CPU, but the little sheet here says that it is a 40 amp BL Heli S 20 by 20. So obviously, it's going to be a smaller flight controller and stack. Yeah, you can see dramatically different in size. If I just put the two side by side, you can see there. Again, very similar layout. So we've got our smaller ESC and flight controller. And then if we go into the box, I suspect we will find the same things. So again, we've got our battery connection. We've got our header wiring harnesses. And in the bottom, really good to see the little pinout leaflet. That's what I was looking for. It's really good that Flywoo do that, actually. It's nice. Just makes setup so much easier out the box. And then that gives us all of the headers and everything for our flight controller. Now, as I said on the other ESC, there really isn't a lot to show you here. It is dramatically smaller than the 50 Amper. So if I just pop them side by side, it is a huge difference. But again, you've got your header, you've got your pads, and they've broke those pads out along there too, which is good to see just in case you damage the connector. The interesting one though, obviously, is the flight controller. Now, as it is smaller, there is going to be less I.O., but it doesn't appear to be particularly restricted. So if I just lay it overhead, again, USB-C port, great to see. F722 flight controller in the middle. Flip it over to this side, still has an OSD chip, still has a flash module, and there are still two backs there as well. If we run down the main spec, it this time has a different gyro. It has the ICM 42688P. Still has a barometer sensor, still has 16 megs of onboard flash, still supports up to 6S on battery voltage, and still has two BECs, one 10 volt 2 amp, one 5 volt 2 amp as well. Now, there are obviously less headers on this one. So what we have at the top here is we've got TX2, RX2, 4 volt 5 and ground. So that's going to be something like your receiver header. You've then got your camera header there for the analog camera. Then along the bottom here, we have another 5 volt header for the LED and then you've got a ground TX5 RX5 4 volt 5 on this side here probably for your GPS then we've got pads here for LED we've got TX and RX4 pads there 
There's power indicator, just like the other one. We've got three volt header there, which is interesting. RX1 located just down there as well. Is there an R TX1 anyway? No, not seeing TX1 there. You then also have on the edge of the board pads for directly soldering. So you've got all your main connections along there and there. And if I flip it over, we've then got our motor connector along the bottom there which is that one on the end. And I suspect this is our digital connector here. Yeah, there we go. So this one here does 10 volt ground, TX3, RX3, ground, RX1. So this one here is your digital connector for your DJI FPV, Avatar HD, HD0. You do also have on this, looking at it, we have SEL, SDA. So there's still I2C, but on pads, there's more LED pads down here. There's more pads up the side there additional motor pads so it still can do up to eight motors and they still break out the usb port on pads over here too really looking at it there isn't anything that's dramatically different between these other than the gyro and whilst there is more io on the big flight controller you still have everything on the mini one it's just that more of it is on pads compared to the larger pro version that has more of it on headers now again, like the bigger brother, the small version also has that controllable 10 volt back, just like I said earlier, allowing you to control that voltage output via a switch on your receiver, just helping to prevent overheating on a digital VTX. Now, just taking a look at the weight of these two stacks, I'm not gonna use the main wiring harness to connect them, that lad close to nothing really, but if we put the full size pro on, you can see we're coming in at 22 grams. And then if we put on the mini we're coming in at 13 grams so there's quite a lot of weight difference between these esc alone seven grams on the small one and esc alone 12 grams on the big one and the flight controller 11 grams on the big one again coming together to 23 and then flight controller on the little one coming in at six grams what did the specification sheet say again? I can't actually remember. 6.2, so bang on. And then with the kit, coming in at 12. Now, just before we start talking about price, because these controllers are actually quite cheap, I just want to come back around on the ESC. Now, as I've said, both of these are BL Heli S based. That is a version of BL Heli. That is the open source version that has been out of development for some time. As a result of that, BL Heli S doesn't have all of the features and capabilities that you may find in BL Heli 32, and it is running on 16-bit microcontrollers. However, you can install BlueJ on these ESCs, which means you're going to get some of the newer features, including things such as RPM filtering. They do, though, come pre-flashed with BL Heli S as standard, and you're going to need to use the ESC configurator to flash these to the likes of BlueJ if you want those newer features. Now, this whole BL Heli S versus BL Heli 32 is a little bit confusing and I'm going to be talking about that a lot more in a new dedicated video in the near future. Now price wise these stacks are actually really good value and they are very much competing with the likes of Speedy B for price. For instance that full size 30 by 30 stack comes in at $79.99 and the flight controller from that stack is available for $44.99 on its own. The mini stack is available for $69.99 and again you can get the flight controller from that on its own for less than $40. Considering what you're actually getting here I think these are really good value. The Flywoo website has a real good write-up on these flight controllers as well. They walk you through a huge amount of information with regards to the spec, the capabilities and they also show you things like the wiring recommendation further down on the page as well and I think they're doing a good job of competing with the likes of Speedy B in this sort of low to mid end of price point for flight controllers. Okay, so before we wrap this one up, just a couple of things to talk about. F722s. Now, obviously, that is the elephant in the room. There are people who are going to be saying, hey, it's got an F7. Why are you even recommending it? Don't forget, though, today, in the likes of Beat the Flight, you do have the custom builds, which means you can pick and choose the features you need. Yes, the F722s have less memory than you get on some of the F4s or the H7s. However, 
If you're using it as a general flight controller for beat to flight, you should be absolutely fine. Beat to flight today really isn't the issue as much on space. It's Ardra Pilot and maybe iNav with things do get a little bit more complicated. If you did want to use this for iNav, there are still many F series controllers out there, 722s. So whilst it doesn't have the most available RAM in the world as well as the most available ROM storage. It doesn't mean it isn't worth a look, but the F7 series has definitely become less popular in recent times compared the to, say, the H series. However, that doesn't mean I wouldn't recommend these. They look to be nice controllers. They've got loads of I.O. Really nice little touches on these that I haven't seen on others. Nice to see that VTX is switchable. Nice to see that the USB header is pinned out separately on pads as well if it gets damaged. And they're at a really good price point as well. If you're interested in getting a set, there will be a link to them in the description. I want to say a thank you to Flywoo for sending them over. As I've said, it's not really a review. It's more of an overview and just some thoughts more than anything and if you're interested in getting these and they do have other controllers as well i think definitely competing well with the likes of speedy b and i see nothing to complain about here now that's it from me on this one if you have found it interesting please do let me know what you think in the comment section below if you have any questions put them down there i will try and answer them as well finally i just want to say if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content in the future please do consider checking out the links to my patreon it is only through the support of my patrons we'll be able to keep making content on this channel and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future please do consider checking it out i want to say a massive thank you to all of the supporters on patreon buy me a coffee and the supporters via youtube we would not be able to keep making content on this channel without your support anyway that's it from me let me know what you think stay safe i will speak to you soon